Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a great week. This is a members chat class. Everybody's welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class in about 90 minutes. And if you'd like to become a member, just click the join button next to the subscribe button on the channel page. This is a task two writing class continuing with yesterday's task two writing topic. If you missed yesterday's class, no problem. We'll quickly review the question and our introductory uh, paragraph today. Uh, before we do that again, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. Uh, and as well, it's presented by gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. For success on the general IELTS, visit us there. Uh, this week, we still have our best promotion of the year uh, going. You can use the coupon code Cyber day it's for cyber monday and it'll give you a 40 percent discount so cyber day i'll show you where you can use that hi elite gamer hi byron uh, elite gamer do you want me to just keep calling you elite gamer i don't mind or if you want to share your name i can try to remember that and call you by your name your first name up to you i can just call you elite for short that's kind of cool right <laughs> okay um all right everyone so uh this is aehelp.com here with the blue background with over 100 hours of HD video lessons for all parts of the IELTS, original practice exams, and a fully interactive course. You can click that big red button to join and use the code CYBERDAY to save that 40%. For general IELTS, same layout, green background, gieltshelp.com. Click that red button there to use the code CYBERDAY. Okay, Elite says, yeah, call me Elite. Elite is cool. <laughs> All right, Elite. I'll call you Elite. Okay. If you have questions at any time, candidates, students, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly answer for you. Welcome, Rajveer. Hi, Nick Hill. Hi, Murat Khan. Byron Blanco. Nice to see so many of our members joining in on this class. That's fantastic. We will have listening part three and four after this class, and then tomorrow we'll have task one, some reading, and then finishing the week with some speaking part two, part three on Saturday. Okay, let's get cooking. Hi, Carolina. This was the task two question that we started yesterday, and it was uh, requested by one of our students. This was a question they got for their November 10th exam. So I'm showing you how to brainstorm and put together, compose a band nine essay. Okay, so let's look at the question, then we'll look at the introductory paragraph and we'll get cracking on those body paragraphs and conclusion. Here's the question, task two writing. Spend about 40 minutes on this task. Many people prefer to wear fashionable clothes. Discuss the positives and negatives of this trend. We did a lot of uh, planning, visualization, critical thinking yesterday in order to come up with the right content, okay? Uh, think about this, students. I'm gonna just give you a note here. This is an additional kind of note for you to contemplate as you're working towards your high band IELTS scores. So uh, keep this in mind, band eight and band nine uh, essays in the IELTS. So let me do a change of language here. Essays on IELTS depend just as much on content as they do on English, okay? Um, so this might be a little bit of information for some of you or new information for some of you, but basically once you get to a band seven level, band seven is what a lot of universities require for entrance for a uh, bachelor's degree, okay? So keep this in mind. This is kind of an interesting point here, and then we'll get into the essay. So band seven can get 
you your English requirement for most bachelor studies at most universities. Okay, now. Um, so this is roughly equal to uh, grade B in uh, grade 12 English, okay? So um, for universities in Canada, universities in the U.S., uh, basically to meet your English requirement for university, if you're a Canadian or American student in high school, uh, you have to have a grade B at least uh, in your um, grade 12 English class, okay? So following with me here, okay? I graduated high school in Canada, so I know this very well. I graduated university in Canada, so I know exactly what I needed. And it only gets more and more difficult. Some universities now actually require a B plus. So uh, some of you are probably thinking, what is a B? Uh, okay, a B is equal to uh, 80, depends on the school, um, but let's say 80 to 85% overall grade. Okay, so uh, for regular Canadian high school students to start university, they need to have um, a B or a B plus 80 to 85% for their overall grade in their grade 12 English class. Now, a band seven is an equivalent. So a band seven is roughly that, okay? So uh, that means that when you get to a band seven, the fact that your English is good is given, okay? That's what a band seven is in IELTS. It means you're a good user of the English language. So for a band eight and a band nine essay, the content becomes much, much more important than the English. You have to have good structure. You have to have good information. Is that clear, everyone? So does that give you kind of a clear concept of what is required or what they need, okay? Because I think a lot of people think that uh, for a band eight or a band nine, you just need really good English, but that's not true, okay? So you don't just need really good English for a band eight, band nine. You need good thinking and you need good content, okay? All right, so keep that in mind, okay? All right, so let's get back on point here, okay? So we read the question, again, simple. Many people prefer to wear fashionable clothes, discuss the positives and negatives of this trend. Okay, let's do that. Uh, so yesterday we planned it and we finished with the introduction. So this is considered a standard format for an introduction for a persuasive essay. Argumentative essay is a type of persuasive essay. Uh, this is a persuasive essay for task two. Uh, and it has a hook, some background, and a thesis. So here we go. Uh, introduction. Millions of individuals enjoy clothing themselves in the latest trends. Many people put much effort to learn and purchase the most popular clothing styles within a particular time and context in a given society. This choice of attire has a significant impact on each person. The two main deficits of choosing to wear fashionable clothing are cost and discrimination. However, the benefits are confidence and recognition. Okay, so here we have our thesis. Our thesis has two clear uh, points, or I should say four clear points and two clear sides, the negative followed by the positive. The negative uh, is cost. I'll go an egg like that. Uh, our cost and discrimination. And then the positive here is the uh, confidence and the recognition. Okay. So negative is body paragraph one. And the positives are body paragraph two. I chose this structure. I chose to start with the negative and then finish with the positive because I do believe that the positives of uh, wearing fashionable clothes tend to outweigh the negatives, okay? Paula, 
welcome to our group of members. Make sure to send me uh, an email so I can hook you up with your exclusive videos. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Join in on the chat. All right, everyone. So let's get into this. Uh, body paragraph one. Let's start. So I want to get rolling and really just get it done today in this class, in this 40 minutes. Okay. We're in the next, yeah, 35, 40 minutes. Uh, body paragraph one, uh, cost and discrimination. Okay. Now, body paragraphs always start with a topic sentence, which is a deeper definition of your thesis point or points, okay, in this case. And in this case, our thesis points are cost and discrimination, okay? So give me a deeper definition of what it means that fashionable clothing is expensive, it's costly, and it's discriminatory, okay? Give me a deeper definition of this so you start to give clarity to your reader, okay? So uh, Ferdov says, trendy clothes most of the time are expensive for an average person, and also they segregate uh, people from the rich and the poor. Ferdov's, that is a beautiful, beautiful topic sentence. That's considered your band nine level caliber writing. Ferdov's, I can tell that you spent time on this last night. You thought about it. You did it for homework. Good for you. That's the right attitude for uh, improving and for success in life. So good for you, Ferdovs. Uh, Beck John says, do we need to write the drawbacks overshadowing the benefits? Um, no, Beck John, it's not asking you for that. So you don't have to emphasize that. Uh, I'm not doing that uh, directly either. I'm indirectly emphasizing the positives by placing it near the end of my essay. Good question, Beck John. So no, you don't need to do that here. It's not, you're not asked to do that. Okay, Rajvir says, individuals required to pay a hefty amount of money when they choose to dress up in fashionable clothes. Moreover, this choice creates differences amongst, amongst citizens in society. Rajvir, that is also really nice writing. I can tell that you put an effort in as well uh, and you studied. Good for you. Um, Rajvir, the word amongst is Old English for among. Okay, so you can choose to use amongst or among, but they're just, um, so amongst and among are the same. Okay, so among equals amongst. Uh, at, many years ago, a student asked me what the difference is between uh, these two words, and I did a bit of research, and I found out that um, among and amongst, the only difference is among is modern English, amongst is old English. Uh, so you can use both. We still do use both of these at times, but uh, just know that among is modern English versus amongst. Okay. So just kind of an interesting side note there. Uh, otherwise a very good topic sentence. Okay. Good morning, Paula from Colombia. Carolina is also from Colombia, although she's in Argentina at the moment. So we've got a couple Colombians in here now. Great. Okay, Bekchan says, putting on trendy clothes on a daily basis is not only, uh, not only costs an arm and a leg, but also leads to separation among individuals according to their wealth. Very good, Bekchan. Very good. Really impressive topic sentences from our students here. Nicely done. Okay, Paula says, fancy clothes are expensive because they require investment. Um, yeah, uh, and there's great, so you're giving, uh, Paula, you're starting to give the explanation for why trendy clothes are expensive, um, which is okay for the topic sentence. Just try to separate the explanation from the definition. Okay. We'll get to that in the next part where we're explaining why, uh, trendy clothes are expensive and why they create separation. Okay. So David says, acquiring the latest um, released pieces of clothes uh, means high costs. As a result, it generates differentiation between social classes. Yeah, very good, David. So you're making the connection between cost and uh, discrimination. And that's really good, David, because there's absolutely a connection there. So again, that's good content. Okay, good content. Hi, Ois. 
Oh, David, you're also from Colombia. Cool. I did not know that, or did I? Um, all right. Um, so here we go. Let's keep, uh, let's keep rolling. Um, let's get this topic sentence out. So uh, I'm going to take one of yours. I'm just seeing such good sentences. I'm going to maybe grab for Dobbs or Rajveer's here from the beginning. So um, let's see. So individuals pay um, a hefty, hefty is a good word, Rajveer. Uh, and I like the addition of average. Average earners. So instead of people, um, it's good to use people, students. Uh, oftentimes, when you're choosing your subject nouns, you want to choose uh, as specifically as possible. So uh, people is quite general, and there are a lot of very specific nouns that refer to people. So here's one interesting one for you. A person who earns money is also called an earner, and you can use the plural for, form of earners. So average earners pay a hefty. Okay, so I'm using a combination of your fantastic topic sentences here. So average earners pay a hefty price uh, to dress up in fashionable clothes. And here, Rajvir, you can use uh, the uh, semicolon comma type of punctuation to add the rest of it in there, okay? Um, so moreover, uh, it this creates a uh, social segregation among the rich and the poor. Okay, so I used a little bit more from you for Dobbs as well because the word segregate or segregation is very nice vocabulary, all right? And rich and poor um, is very nice vocabulary as well, all right? So well done, okay? All right, so that is a great topic sentence now. So average earners pay a hefty price to dress up in fashionable clothes. Moreover, this creates a social segregation among the rich and the poor, okay? That is a great topic sentence. Okay, so now let's go into the explanation, okay? Explanation is how, why, so think about why. And uh, think also about um, quantifying. In the explanation, you want to think numbers. So you want to create clarity for your reader. And very often you do that with visual language and with quantitative language. So allowing your reader to see what you're explaining and count what you're saying, okay? So that is your goal with a good explanation most of the time. Okay, let's see some explanations. So let's see uh, how you explain this concept of expensive uh, to be fashionable. And uh, we talked a little bit about that. Remember, we said a couple interesting points yesterday of why it's expensive. So think outside the box. Uh, for Dov says, in other words, it's difficult to find stylish clothes under $100 US either on the internet or in boutiques, which most people cannot afford as they make uh, $10 US a day. Okay, for Dov's, sure, good. Um, so you're get going into quantitative language, good. How does that create segregation? So explain that as well, okay? Bekshan says, this in turn leads students and employees to. Um, insult in the way they close themselves. Okay, uh, the start is good, Beck John. I'm trying to figure out what you mean by the second half of your sentence there. So this in turn leads students and employees uh, to criticize the way they close themselves. I think instead of insult, you're looking for the word criticize there, Beck John. Criticize 
is the better word. They insult each other based on a poor choice of clothing or unfashionable clothing. I get what you might be trying uh, to express, but uh, criticize is perhaps a little bit better used for clarity. Okay. Uh, Beck John says the price of outfits um, set by popular brands such as Gucci and Chanel may reach up to thousands of dollars, which do not meet the uh, pockets of the of middle class families. Yeah, Beck John, careful a little bit with your writing, with your grammar. Uh, Rajveer says purchasing trendy clothes requires at least 50% greater budget than buying non fashionable ones. People who cannot afford to pay for these stylish attires often do not get attention and respect uh, for their opinions. Um, okay, Rajveer, not bad. That last part there, the respect and attention, uh, that will, I think, overlap with um, the uh, positive side, the confidence. So you can do that, but you might hold off on that until the second paragraph and just kind of emphasize the, the positives or the positive perspective instead, if you get what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I see, Beck John. Still, as the second half, Beck John, this in turn leads students and employees to criticize the way they close themselves. Yeah. Okay. Still, criticize is still the better word. Okay. David says since modern and stylish attires are exclusive, they can cost an arm and a leg, not only the exclusivity, but also the materials and the brands, which add a premium. Okay. You can simplify an extra value to the item, David, with one word. You can write the word premium. When you have an extra cost because of the brand name, because of the advertising, it's called a premium, the popularity. It's a premium. You're paying a premium. It's a noun in this case. Okay. So simplify and being concise. That's where lexical resource obviously comes in handy. Lubna says it's obvious that popular attires are the most pricey as they are in demand. I was looking for that Lubna, the supply and demand. Yeah. Students always think about the mega truths in society, right? Remember, um, I've said this to you in past lessons as well to think of good content. Think about the big truth in global society that applies to most humans. When there is great demand, the price goes up. An example, of course, is hand sanitizers and face masks at the start of COVID. Boy, did the price of those products ever go up. It's because of supply and demand. So Lubna, very good, clever thinking. Okay. Um, so also the additional cost of accessory, accessorizing cannot be neglected. Lubna, I would change that. So I think that's a little bit wordy, that last part, but the first part is great. Okay. All right. Uh, Lubna continues with furthermore, this behavior deepens the gap between the ordinary crowd and fashion lovers as those who are in the trend are viewed as rich and attractive and the re rest as impoverished and unpleasant. Okay. Lubna, little bit generalized, but nice writing, a little bit general, but nice writing. Okay. All right, for Dobbs, you're just uh, doing a great job. I can tell you invested a lot of time to develop this essay yesterday, so good for you. Okay, all right. So again, quantitative language is uh, good, okay? So um, trendy clothes often cost five times that of no, here I'm going to teach you an interesting expression, no name uh, brands. And um, average employees such as office workers need to work 
for eight hours just to buy a pair of jeans. Furthermore, those who are not able to afford the most popular brands can be uh, criticized by others for lacking success and status in society. Okay. So, um, Okay, Lubna, thank you for reminding me about that. Um, so here we go. Uh, here's my explanation. Trendy clothes often cost five times that of no-name brands. Uh, we call, so when uh, a pair of jeans or a shirt doesn't have a logo or doesn't you know, have that Nike swoosh, we call it a no-name brand, okay? It's interesting. There's actually a brand called no-name brand, ironically, but uh, <laughs> that's what we call them. So uh, trendy clothes often cost five times that of no-name brands because of their high demand. And average employees, such as office workers, need to work for eight hours just to buy a pair of jeans. Uh, furthermore, let's make that a little bit clearer. This is why it's always good to review your work. What kind of jeans? Not just any jeans, designer jeans. Okay, so designer jeans. Furthermore, those who are not able to afford the most popular brands can be criticized by others for lacking success and uh, status in society. Okay, all right. So that's my explanation. Okay, um, so now uh, what comes after? I'm sure many of you know, but I want to hear you or I want to see it written into the comments to remind a lot of our viewers and maybe some of our newer members of what you need to do uh, once you have a good explanation. So oftentimes teachers will just say supporting point one, supporting point two. I like to be a little bit clearer on what these supporting points actually are in most cases. So Beck John, thank you. Beck John says an example. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's important to consider when we're writing the example? Okay. So there's a couple of good points to consider uh, when you're thinking about your example, again, to create cohesion, coherence, and good content. Okay, so that's right, Carolina, example. Okay, and what, what do you need to remember? So this is what I want you to keep in mind. So what is important for a good example, for a band nine example? What should you remember to do? Okay, what does the example have to contain? Okay, Lubna says, so when possible, use an example that you can use in both paragraphs. Yeah, exactly, because that creates cohesion, right? So example, um, when possible, it's not always possible, but when possible, one that can be used in both paragraphs. Because that creates cohesion. Yeah, exactly, for cohesion. Mm hmm okay uh, what else um, it's sh so for us it should answer the question I think what you're trying to say there for is it should be relevant to your example or your explanation um, should be it should be closely relevant to your explanation Okay, so sometimes what students do is they have an explanation, they give an example, but there's a gap between the explanation and the example. It's kind of difficult to make the connection between the explanation and the example. So you want to make that very easy and clear um, for uh, the uh, reader, okay? Yeah, so Rajveer, very good. So Rajveer says, come up with an example that clearly backs up the explanation and seems logical. Okay, 
Yeah, Lubna, exactly. We're using the third person voice in this essay because this essay does not ask for our personal opinion. So we're staying in the third person voice. Good observation. Okay. All right. So Ois, change your example to third person voice. The idea is good, Ois. Just change it to the third person voice. Okay. All right. Um, so a uh, little bit more on what a good example needs. So it should be closely relevant to your explanation. It should be specific and real world. It should be easily recognized by your audience. Okay. So don't write an example that's confusing for your reader that your reader is not familiar with, okay? If you're talking about fast food restaurants, maybe don't choose one that's specific to your city or even your country, but choose one that's international. Use the example of McDonald's, okay? Um, if you're talking about fashionable clothes, maybe choose a brand that's not just locally known, but known around the world, like Gucci, Okay, everybody knows Gucci, no matter where you are, most people will know Gucci. So use that instead of a specific brand that's popular only in your area. Okay, all right. So these are some really important points to remember, okay? The better you can do this, definitely the better you will score on your essay. So whenever possible, think of an example that you can use in both paragraphs to create that cohesion, okay? Um, your explanation, or sorry, your example should be very closely tied to your explanation. It should be real world and it should be easily recognized. Okay, keep that in mind. All right. So uh, here we go. Uh, we have some examples already. Everybody's a bit anxious to get them out. Um, so Lubna says, according to recent statistics by Gul Mahar fashion industry, it was recorded that on average, most employees spend three quarters of their salary on purchasing popular clothing. And this attitude has negatively impacted the work environment by sidelining the average dressed workers. Very good, Lubna. I like it. Okay. Now you won't be able to use that in your next paragraph you might be able to say the same article however also stated that I, if you can do something like that Lubna I think okay uh, all right Ois just last week I purchased uh, an Adidas suit for $500 from a sports store an Adidas um, track suit uh, for $500 from a sports store while I checked the same suit in the local store for $200 uh, but a big gap in quality and price. OS, I think you're off topic there. Okay, you're off topic. So you have to rethink that, make that into third person and create a better example. All right, Begjan says, uh, as an illustration, according to the survey carried out in British schools in 2018, uh, four out of eight fights among students were caused because of discrimination in terms of clothing style. Okay, Begjan. Uh, that's good. So, yeah. All right. Uh, David says, for example, Gucci items, which are costly, have a high demand in the local car, uh, market. Consequently, those who wear these brand products have high social recognition. Okay. Uh, good. So you're on the right track, David. I think we can get even a little bit better, but I think uh, you have a very good example there. Uh, Ferdov says, to illustrate, recent research has shown that people who follow trendy clothes spend at least 5,000 U.S. a year, and 90% of people earn less than 4,000 U.S. per year. Okay, I think you're going a little bit off topic there, Ferdov, so we want to stay close to our explanation, okay? So, um, Rajveer says, a pair of Gucci shoes which is trendy footwear and so sh shows social status in India, cost 20,000 rupees while shoes from a wholesale market price just 2,000 rupees. Okay. All right. Um, sure. Uh, Rajveer, you don't have to explain that Gucci shoes are trendy footwear. People will know that. Okay. So yes, your reader is an alien, but even the alien knows that Gucci shoes are really expensive. So no need to explain that. Okay. All right. 
Um, here's my example. So uh, um, a fashionable pair of Levi's jeans costs around 150 US dollars um, in comparison to its 15 dollar no name counterpart. Studies show that teenagers wearing brand name jeans in school are more widely accepted and adored by their peers. Okay. So um, notice my example here. I'm just kind of coming up with this on the go. Uh, so I remembered that in my explanation, uh, I said something about jeans. So I, I said, need to work for eight hours just to buy a pair of designer jeans. So I thought, okay, what would be an example of designer jeans that most people are familiar with? I came up with Levi's. Are most of you familiar with Levi's jeans? If I'm not mistaken, it's quite an internationally recognized brand. So I thought, okay, well, Levi's jeans, I've definitely seen that popular trendy Levi's jeans are quite expensive compared to no-name brands. They go anywhere from $100 to $150 US a pair. That's where you can buy jeans for $15 dollars, maybe even less, okay, uh, for their no-name counterpart. Notice this interesting use of this word, the counterpart, okay? Counterpart is the opposite, okay? David says, sure, at least in Colombia, we got Levi's. Yeah, uh, I know in Europe here, I've seen it in most places, and I've seen it around in my travels in Asia as well, so... And then studies show that teenagers wearing brand name jeans in school are more widely accepted and adored by their peers as where, and I can expand here, as where uh, students who cannot afford these are often bullied. Okay. There we go. Um, okay, so there is my specific example, and there is my body paragraph one. Now, um, I can summarize this paragraph with a very simple sentence. So many of you learned that, oh, it's good to have a concluding sentence. Sure, we can do that easily. Uh, clearly, these are the negative impacts of... Uh, pursuing fashion in society, all right? So there is my very simple connecting concluding sentence for the IELTS, okay? Uh, Beckjohn says, let's switch to the positives with the concluding connecting sentence. Nevertheless, keeping up with the latest trends in clothing has some advantages. Okay, yeah, you can do that as well. So you can summarize with the negative or you can summarize by switching over to the next paragraph's tone or information. Yeah, that works, okay? All right, uh, keep it simple though. So for Dobbs, you want to keep it simple. It seems like what you're writing there is going to be the topic sentence of your next body paragraph. And that's what we're gonna do now. I'm just gonna review this body paragraph to make sure that uh, it reads well and it's what I want to do. Uh, so average earners pay a hefty price to dress up in fashionable clothes. Moreover, this creates a social segregation among the rich and the poor. Trendy clothes often cost five times that of no-name brands because of their high demand. And average employees, such as office workers, need to work for eight hours a day just to buy a pair of designer jeans. Furthermore, those who are not able to afford the more, most popular trends can be criticized by others for lacking success and status in society. 
A fashionable pair of Levi's jeans costs around 150 US dollars in comparison to its $15 no-name counterpart. Studies show that teenagers wearing brand name jeans in school are more widely accepted and adored by their peers, as where students who cannot afford these are often bullied. Clearly, these are the negative impacts of pursuing fashion in society. Okay, that seems to read well. I'm confident that I will get a good mark for that. And now I can continue on with my body two. Okay, body two. So body two will rely on the positives. And the positives are confidence and recognition. So confidence and recognition. Think about what that means. Define that in a deeper sense. Okay. You can see that some of you are really anxious to get that out. Okay. Ferdov says the following trends or following modern trends, Ferdov's following modern trends can boost people's self-esteem and assist them to be accepted by colleagues and peers, which is vital for success. Mm -hmm. Ferdov's, I like it. Okay. It's just the beginning, the following trends, not the following trends, but following the latest trends. Okay. So keeping up with the latest clothing trends. Okay. Like that for Dobbs. That's how you want to correct. And I'm going to continue with that. Uh, Bagshan says wearing stylish clothes assists people to feel assured of their abilities, value, and worth. Another benefit of being trendy is that it attracts many people's attention in the public. Okay, Beck John, I see where you're going with it. It's looking good in public places and workspaces mm -hmm. or just in public Beck John is, is enough. And then you can explain more later. Rajveer says, by putting on the latest design clothes, people uh, look presentable and get appreciation from family members and coworkers. Yes. Murat Khan says, considering the positives, being abreast of the latest trends can be considered being accepted by others along with building confidence. Okay. Uh, Murat Khan, try to think of another way to, um, to paraphrase confidence. Okay, so what's another way? Uh, what you should do, students, when you're thinking about how can I give deeper definitions of the word confidence and recognition, okay? Then uh, do some word association, okay? So when you have your thesis points, like confidence and recognition, do word association before engaging your uh, body paragraph topic sentence. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean. So for me, uh, when uh, I think of the word recognition and then I start to think of what words do I associate? Okay. So the question in my head is which words do I associate with the word recognition? So praise, appreciation, status, impression. Okay. So eventually my mind uh, comes to this word impression because we make an impression on the people that we meet uh, by our appearance and of course by our attitude. Okay. So Rajveer says appreciation, attention. Exactly. And then eventually you come to a word like impression and then you go, aha, wait a second, impression, first impression. And then when you come to first impression, then you realize that you've got a little bit of gold here and you can use that little bit of gold to get your band scores, right? To get better content. OK, 
Okay, uh, so now I can create, okay, uh, did everybody catch that? So this was an important tip, an important strategy here. So when you're thinking about, okay, how should I start? Topic sentences are very important for body paragraphs. Uh, when you're thinking about how should I write my topic sentence, think about the word you used for your thesis. This is why the thesis is so important to have a good thesis. Um, and then you start thinking, okay, praise, appreciation, status, impression, first impression. Then now you can have deeper definition and you're into some writing gold, okay? Uh, Carolina says assurance, certainty, courage, determination, tenacity is a very uh, good uh, word as well, okay? So great, Carolina, very nice words. Tenacity is a very good one, okay? All right, so now... Keeping up with the latest clothing trends, and of course I'm doing the same thing uh, with the word uh, confidence as well, right? So keeping up uh, with the latest clothing uh, trends oftentimes uh, creates a strong first impression in public uh, when meeting others based on uh, appearance and this in turn results in high uh, self esteem and even greater success so you're probably thinking well how does adrian do that how does he come up with topic sentences like that and that's exactly how i do it so i take the words from my uh, thesis points, I play a bit of word association, and as soon as I feel that I've found a word that associates really well with that word to define it, uh, then I create an image around it, and then I come up with a sentence like this. So keeping up with the latest clothing trends often creates a strong first impression in public when meeting others based on appearance, and this in turn results in high self-esteem and even greater success, okay? All right, Beckjen says that, that works well, okay? So um, good topic sentence, now I can go into an explanation, right? So um, when people do not have information about strangers, for the first time they meet in school or the workplace, they tend to make um, initial judgments based on that person's uh, choice of attire. Frequently, when people are clothed in expensive uh, modern uh, designer gear, they are immediately respected and accepted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, here is my explanation. Okay, and I see some of you are coming up with explanations as well. I'm just moving along here just to kind of show you this. Uh, keep putting your uh, writing into the chat, so I encourage you, keep going with it, and then just compare it to what I'm writing. See if it kind of matches that flow or that concept within your own content. So of course your writing, it's unique, it's your style, it's your diction, okay? There's a lot of different ways to write a band nine essay. Just be sure that it has the same kind of flow and connection, okay? So that's what you're going towards here, all right? So uh, for the students wearing the Levi's uh, jeans
it is an absolute positive for their self worth um, to be to gain popularity among their peers and arguably this carries over into their future successes in university and career. Okay. All right. So here I'm going back to that example that I used in my first body paragraph about the Levi jeans uh, being expensive, creating discrimination among students. But hey, arguably those same students who are wearing those Levi jeans, it's not bad for them. Uh, they're being respected by others. They're being liked by others. They feel good about themselves because of that. And because of that, uh, they uh, gain better jobs, they uh, gain more self-confidence, and uh, they gain success in university, okay? So again, IELTS essay, your goal here is to get that band nine. Whether or not that's perfectly true, we'll leave that for another day. It's arguable, it makes sense, it works for a high band essay, okay? All right. So uh, next is the conclusion, okay? And in the conclusion, the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, reiterate the um, points of my thesis, okay? And then I want to strengthen my arguments, and then I want to create a take-home message. So conclusion has three parts, all right? Uh, I'm going through this a little bit faster right now, a little bit higher paced. Okay, there are some lessons on the channel and on the website where I go a little bit slower through the conclusion, but we only have a few minutes left here. So I want to complete this essay for you. I want to show you how I would do it. And then again, you can just compare and see if your conclusion has similar elements that flow within the context of your essay. Okay, All right, so that, that's what we're going to do right now. Um, IELTS, they like to see the words in conclusion. Uh, it shows the examiner right away that you know that the last paragraph should be a conclusion. So in conclusion, when you write a conclusion, it's a good idea to reflect back on the question, okay? So just like uh, with the introduction where you have a lot of reflecting on the question, uh, in the conclusion, you should always reflect on the question. So many people prefer to wear fashionable clothes. Discuss the positives and negatives of this trend. Okay, so I'm gonna think about this. I just read this, this preference, fashionable clothes, and then start my conclusion with that, okay? So in conclusion, the desire to be uh, trendy when choosing clothes definitely has certain benefits as well as deficits for individuals in their uh, daily life. Um, yeah, okay, I'm not going to overcomplicate it. Sometimes it's just good to stop. So in conclusion, the desire to be trendy when choosing clothes definitely has certain benefits as well as deficits for individuals in their daily lives. On the one hand, being in fashion is a costly endeavor and creates a certain type of prejudice but on the other hand 
it also results in acceptance and self-esteem. Notice how I'm paraphrasing. Okay. All right. So what's my take home message here? Whenever possible, it is a good idea to dress the part. Okay. Um, so whenever possible, it is a good idea to dress the part. Uh, whenever possible, it is beneficial to dress the part. Okay. Um, this is an expression that I'm using here. Uh, I'm going to teach you this. So dress the part means that if you're going to a business meeting, put on a suit, put on a tie. Um, if you're going to play sports, uh, put on shorts uh, and a t-shirt. So uh, whenever possible, it's beneficial to dress the part. Okay. All right. So that's my conclusion. Uh, now I'm going to just read that, make sure it makes sense, make sure I'm not just repeating myself. Make sure it's not just a repeat of my introduction. Uh, here we go. In conclusion, the desire to be trendy when choosing uh, clothes definitely has certain benefits as well as deficits for individuals in their daily life. On the one hand, being in fashion is a costly endeavor and creates a certain type of prejudice. But on the other hand, it also results in acceptance and self-esteem. This is where all of that word association comes in handy as well. Okay. Whenever possible, it is beneficial to dress the part. Okay. Uh, because obviously sometimes it's not possible if it's out of our budget, right? But I'm not going to go into that much detail. Cool. So there is my complete essay. Uh, lots of little tips, lots of big tips and strategies as well. Uh, for everybody watching, uh, please make sure to visit us at aehelp.com for lots more help with your writing, speaking, and other parts of IELTS. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. And right now, you can still use our code CYBERDAY to get 40% off on your premium package, which is a lifetime membership. So it's a good idea to do that. Lubna, Oas, Ferdobs, Bekjan, Rajvir, really nice writing today, okay? So lots of great writing. Carolina, uh, nice writing as well. Um, shout out to all of our members from Colombia. We had a new member from Colombia join us today. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up. Paula with your exclusive uh, videos coming up in about 30 minutes. I will host another class, uh, which will be the listening section of IELTS. We will practice for parts three and four with some of our exam materials. I'll give you some strategies. Hopefully everyone will hang around for that. Uh, and I'll be back after a short half hour break. Great job, everyone. Keep up the good work. I will post this essay on our YouTube community board. So check it out there later. Bye for now, everyone. See you shortly.